The Greensboro Aquatic Center is quiet now that the USA Swimming Winter Nationals have concluded. USA Swimming has a long list of, US, of Olympic trials qualifiers to go through now. More than 100 people have qualified for the meet in 2020 in Omaha. More than I expected. I expected just about 100. So it's really great to see all of those swimmers getting their trials cuts now, getting the training in, because now they have a year and a half. They don't have to worry about if they're going to train for trials. They're in, they're going to go. Maybe now they just have to think about qualifying for more events. So we had some swimmers just qualify for one event. Some qualify for two, and some were really happy that they got to get in three events. But my guest tonight on the show qualified in trials for four events, Emma Wan from the Sarasota Y Sharks. Emma, it's great to have you here. Thank you for having me. So four events, the 400 freestyle, the 800 freestyle, 200 IM, and 400 IM. You just wanted to get all the tough events. Yeah, definitely. So of the four races that you qualify for trials in, which one are you most proud of this week? Um, probably 4 a.m. That's definitely my best event. Um, I put most of my work in there, so yeah. Well, it's good you said the 400 a.m. because we're going to show our viewers some highlights of that <laughs> race. You qualified third, um, and this is only your second national, so yeah. were you pretty excited about qualifying third? Yeah, it was, um, it was a good heat of girls, and there's a lot of Olympians in there too, so um, it was cool to get to race them. All right, so we're going to take a look at that race, and again, for people who don't know about individual melees, Butterfly, backstroke, breaststroke, freestyle in that order. And before we show the race, we here you are walking out. Uh, there you are right there in the yellow cap. Um, you had some pretty good competition. You had Madison Cox, who had won the 200 IM. Um, there you are in lane number three. So at the start, you're next to Madison. Yeah. Were you at all aware of what she was doing, or were you trying to stay in your own lane? Um, I'm definitely aware of what people are doing, um, definitely folks dancing in my own lane, but uh, being aware of what where I am in the lane and in the heat. All right, so we saw your dolphin kicks very good underwaters yeah. there. <laughs> Were you working on those a lot? Yeah, definitely. All right, so there you are in the yellow cap, third from the bottom there. Um, tell us what's going on right here. Okay, you're so... Not, you're not with, you're not in the lead, so yes, you know how do you keep manage your control and your patience? Um, I've definitely had to learn that I'm definitely a back half swimmer on this event um, and not freak out too much when I'm not, um, even in the top three after the first 100, even 200, um, and then really focus on breaststroke and I always know I can bring it home on freestyle. Yeah, this breaststroke is very good. You got up into second place yeah. and look at that. I mean, Madison, like you said, is so far out there. You can't mm -hmm. really concern yourself yeah. with what she's doing. So here we are we're going in from breaststroke into freestyle and so you're turning are you at all aware of where you are with the rest of the field? Um, I knew I was getting up there. Um, I saw a couple of girls uh, getting up there in freestyle, so I was just trying to touch the wall and get ahead of as many people as possible. And this final 15 meters, I've swum a few 400 IMs. I know it really, really hurts. And here, look at this battle you got here. You get your feet, you get your hand to the wall, you get second place. Yeah. What were your emotions when you saw you got second? Um, I was really excited. Um, that was obviously a pretty cool heat. Um, there's a lot of good people in there, so I Yeah, decided. you touched out Haley Flick and yeah. her, who is, is no slouch either in, yes, in, the, in the IM. So I know it wasn't your best time, mm -hmm. but you're not even fully tapered for this meet, are you? Right, yeah. So um, going into it, knowing that you're going to a Nationals and you're not fully tapered, how does that affect your racing style? Um, well, I loaded up my events for this uh, meet also, so I was just trying to really just focus on racing and uh, executing how I want to race in the future. Okay, uh, so last summer was your first nationals in mm -hmm. Irvine yes. and you made the final. Yeah. Pretty exciting. What was that ready room like? Um, that was definitely tense. Um, people were talking so it makes it a little bit better. Um, they're talking about the overhead camera on backstroke so it relieves a little bit of stress. And from that meet you qualified to go to Junior Pan Pax yeah. in Fiji. I'm jealous. You got to go to Fiji and swim at yeah. Pampax, and you walked away with some hardware bronze in the 800 yeah. free and gold in the 400 yes. IM. Yes. Congratulations on that. Thank you. I understand you had to actually swim that in the rain. Yeah, yeah. It was um, not the best conditions on the last couple of days, but it was fun. So how were you able to, you know, forget that it's raining and it's a little bit chilly in an outdoor meet and just say, okay, I'm just going to go out there and race hard? Yeah, we definitely leaned on our teammates. Um, there's a couple other girls in that heat from USA, so we all um, get together and just race each other. So. And it was was it your first time out of the country? Yeah, it was my first international meet. To go to Fiji. Yeah. 
on your on your first international trip is really really yeah, cool. It was really cool. What do you what what were your what lessons did you learn from this kind of a meet? Um, I definitely learned that you have to just be confident in what you can do and swim your own race, and then also lean on your teammates because they're there to help you. So uh, Christmas is coming up. Yes. What do you want for Christmas? Tell all your friends oh out God. there what they should be getting you. Oh my god, I don't know. Um, definitely chocolate. I eat a lot of chocolate. Okay. <laughs> I think chocolate's pretty yes. easy. Pretty yes. much can handle that. Okay, yes. chocolate. Well, you know, I'm, holiday training is going to be pretty tough. Yes. So and you, I'm sure you probably come up after a hard workout mm -hmm. with just Hershey bars. Yes, <laughs> yes. Just kind of get rid of all the, the trauma from, from the workout. Most definitely. Any New Year's resolutions that you got in mind? Um, Swimming-wise, um, focusing on trials coming up, definitely. Yeah. Okay. So you've got four cuts already. Mm -hmm. Is there one event out there that you haven't got a trial cut for that you'd really like to get? Um, I'm going to go up to the 200 free and possibly 200 breast. Woo. Yes. Okay. Get all the 200s. Might as well just say yeah. 200 well. fly, 200 back. Might as well just get yes. them all. Yes. That would be really cool. Of course, you know, it'd be tough to swim yes. eight events at trials, but True. you know, you can at least you could say I got eight trial cuts. Yes. Not many people are going to be able to do that. <laughs> Well, Emma, thank you so much for joining thank us. It's a so pleasure much. to meet you. Congratulations on all your success this year. We'll be uh, keeping our eye on you through uh, the road to 2020. Thank you so much for having me. All right. Thank you very much, Emma. And uh, we're going to talk about another exciting race, the men's, 400, men's 100 freestyle. But first, let's take a look at this. I know for, for me as someone who was, you know, a closeted kid growing up in the sport, I really struggled with that and sometimes swimming became a very unhealthy outlet. Um, and to me now working in the sport where we have, you know, uh, rainbow landline stickers and, um, you know, diversity and inclusion guides where coaches are being aware of these things, it just makes me think, wow, if I'd had this when I was younger, um, what would my experience in the sport have been like and how could it have been different? And um, just to know that, you know, if there's a, if there's a, kid in the LGBT community that is, um, you know, swimming right now and doesn't know if this is the place for them or if they have a place that content that we're putting out from our headquarters even, um, it's important for them to see that this sport does have a place for them and they do belong here and, um, you know, that the USF Swimming is an inclusive environment. So it's really great that USA Swimming has these resources now for diversity and inclusion in the sport and like Mitch said, I was... Uh, I was a closet gay man growing up in my elite ranks in swimming and it was very tough sometimes to be able to just get through the days and, and try to just be my authentic self and um, it's great that a lot of swimmers now have that those resources and that opportunity to really have people they can talk to and really feel like they're they belong in the water because we don't want to lose anybody because they don't feel like they belong here everybody's included in USA swimming so as I said we're gonna talk about a big race of the night it was epic it was really epic, and it was the men's 100 freestyle, and we had the 2012 Olympic gold medalist Nathan Adrian racing that guy right there, Michael Chadwick, who was disqualified in the 50 freestyle for a false start, so he had a lot to prove, and Nathan's over there in lane number six. He's third from the top, and Michael Chadwick's in lane number three, and both of these guys took it out fast, as we expect them to do, and Chadwick there, or sorry, Chadwick's in four, and He's got the straight arm recovery, the high tempo, and he's really making sure that he's setting a statement right now. Um, he's breathing to his left, Nathan's breathing to his right, so they both see each other here, and Michael is out fast. Look at this time, 23-25 at the 50. And you know, this is where Nathan Adrian has always been reliable the last 50 meters, but Michael is not giving up. I really like the tempo that Michael has here. And Nathan, I, I'm sure, is kind of tired here. He's bogged down heavy training and don't see the tempo that he usually has. Michael, on the other hand, that tempo is up. Look at those legs and driving to the wall. Last little stroke. And Michael gets his hand on the wall, beats Nathan Adrian by two one hundredths of a second. Kind of an upset. Um, but Michael Chavik has really been doing a lot of great work in the Hunter Freestyle, and after the race, I got a chance to talk to him. Okay, so Michael, congratulations on winning that Hunter Freestyle. How much did your DQ in the 50 on Thursday play into that swim? Uh, I would say a lot. I was, I was pretty unhappy after the 50 free DQ. Watched the video a few times, couldn't really see where exactly it was, but you know, nothing I can do about it. So I had a little bit of a, a motivation on the 100 to get, get that back. Now you were breathing on the last 50, you were breathing away from Nathan, so you had no idea where he was. So 
How did you? How were you able to get your hand on the wall two one hundredths a sec of a second ahead of him? Uh, you know, that's a great question. I think one thing I said before I raced that race was I'm just going to swim my own race. I, I knew Nathan wasn't going to be anywhere in my peripherals, so I just kind of had to trust that the last 15 I could uh, hopefully pull it through. And three tenths off your lifetime best. That's got to make you feel good for swimming in on December 1st. Absolutely, yeah. That's uh, on December 1st. Heading to China on Tuesday to do a few relays, so I, I couldn't be happier. Well, I think you're going to be doing really well in China, and this is obviously going to be a big step forward for you. 2019, I'm sure. Absolutely, yeah. I can't wait to see what, what happens next. All right, congratulations. Enjoy China. Thank you. So as I said, that was a big highlight of the night. Nathan Adrian and Michael Chadwick battling it out in the 100 freestyle. It was great to see Haley Flickener do so well in that 200 fly. 207 is just a fantastic time. As you know, she broke that long-standing U.S. Open record at Nationals last summer, and she's still looking like the class of the field 200 fly. 200 breast strokes were great. Nick Fink just had a great last 50 to, to win that race. 1,500 was great. Ashley Twitchell just took off at the 750 and just had a great swim there. It's just been a great meet all around. It's been so fun to be able to bring it all to you guys here on Deck Pass Live. But we're just taking a little break because we've got a lot more to do. Just in a few more weeks, we got the Tier Pro Swim Series that starts off for 2019 in Knoxville, January 9th through 12th. And look at that, we've got four more after that in Iowa, Virginia, Indiana, and California. And then a month later is the national championships and, of course, the world championships. So be sure to join us for all of that. I'll be there for Deck Pass Live at all of these stops in the Pro Swim Series, bringing you interviews, race analysis, everything you want from these Pro Swim Series meets. So, again, thank you, everybody, for joining us for these past three days. Thanks to everybody behind the camera, everybody who's been here helping us at the Greensboro Aquatic Center make it happen. We'll see you guys in January in Knoxville. And have a good holiday. Thank you.